What's going on, everybody? Uh, we had some technical issues closing out the strategy show this morning. So I'm back to just walk through the Pelicans and Oklahoma City game. We do have all of the audio that uh, Lafay and I went through, and that is posted to our iTunes feed and already posted. Um, so if you search for awesomeo.com on iTunes or your podcast app, uh, you could subscribe uh, and get that audio uh, on a on a general basis. We also add up uh, the audio of some other shows. Uh, ben and Tim's PGA show is on there as well. You get the early bird podcast. So check out our iTunes feed if you haven't had it before. I do want to hop in right now and uh, just take a little bit of time on this Pelicans Oklahoma City game because it's it's pretty clearly the b- best game on the slate. It's the it's probably my favorite from a high end. So let's start here on the Pelican side. You know, it is a pace up spot. I think that when we finally started losing our uh, our or started having our technical issues, we had at least talked about Anthony Davis. Um, it's a tricky spot there. If he plays 24 minutes, he's not a guy that I have much interest in, and he's at 29% ownership. If he plays 30 minutes, then he's a guy that I want a ton of, and I'd re- I'd like to be over the field. The amount of minutes that he plays are certainly up in the air, and it's tricky to even be confident. I think that's why you see his ownership in the 29% range, because 9K Anthony Davis is not something that comes around all that often. Um. When it gets down to it, I assume that I end up under the field. It just doesn't strike me as a situation where he's going to play monster minutes um, heading into the all-star break, but who knows? It's a game against the Thunder. Maybe he wants this one. I really don't know how to manage it, and the this is one of the trickier things going on right now in the league is just managing um, who you think is going to play and how much they want to win that particular game. Lafie touched on Drew Holiday a little bit. I'm not as enamored with him. Uh, if he's not going to be getting the 37, 38 minutes that you you would want him to get with AD back, uh, he lowers the utility a bit for me. He's still phenomenal, you know, a 1.2 fantasy point per minute guy. Um, and I will have exposure to him, but he's not a guy that I'm, I'm unloading on. I have Randall and Okafor both in for 28 minutes, and this is assuming that Anthony Davis plays 24. If they both get 28 minutes or somewhere in that neighborhood, I really, really like um, Jaleel Okafor at 5,300 if he can see those minutes. Um, He's at 26% ownership on DraftKings, 22 on FanDuel. No problem going that direction. I also don't have much of an issue going to Randall. Uh, It just makes it a little bit easier with Okafor's price. Um, in the audio, Lafay mentioned that he doesn't really like uh, Kenrich Williams. If he's going to be playing a lot of minutes at the three, he sort of removes him from the rebounding piece. And I don't disagree that it, it becomes a, a less optimal scenario, but even at 6 k or 5400 on DK or $18 on Yahoo, uh, if he's going to see 32 minutes and he's been playing you know 30 plus every night, there's still utility in that, even if he's playing at an inopportune position. So He's someone that I still have interest in. Um, I have walked back my Tim Frazier minutes projection down to 24, which still makes him a, a you know a feasible punt play at 3,800 or 4,400 on FanDuel. And every other minute that he gets above that is golden. Um, he could be a really interesting piece in a game with a monster pace. And the Thunder's defense, at least from a fantasy perspective, hasn't been as crazy lately. So... I'm comfortable with any one of those six guys at the top, but minutes are really uh, carrying the weight, whether that's AD and his up-in-the-air status for how much he's going to play to Tim Frazier and even Drew Holiday. Just getting down to 34 makes him uh, a little bit less interesting for me. Now, on the Oklahoma City side, massive implied total, number one on the slate. Um, It's a really nice pace matchup. We should be up and down. Russ and Paul George, 12-4 and 12-5, respectively, FanDuel and um, on FanDuel. Uh, so Paul George, more expensive, 12500 I would much rather go to Russ there. Uh, they have similar ownership right now. On DK, similar ownership once again, 11-6 for Russ, 10-7 for Paul George. Um, I would rather have Paul George, but these two guys are the guys that I want to pay up for today. 
and it's why I had so little interest in the Orlando and Charlotte side and for the most part the Atlanta side. Um, this is where I want to spend my money is Russell Westbrook and Paul George. I feel really comfortable here. Not super comfortable on which one is the guy that pops. Um, but if I'm spending up into this salary range, these are the guys that I want to go to. Steven Adams, 7K on FanDuel, 62 DK, and 23 on Yahoo. Uh, has not been great lately. 0.91 fantasy points per minute over his last 30 days. Um, I have a hard time projecting him at that rate. It's not as if the team has dramatically changed. You know, maybe Paul George's role is bringing him down, but if I project him more towards his normal rates, he is a steal at these prices. And these, this is the t- kind of time where I like having Adams. Three-game slate where, you know, 6,200, he gets to 35, 40 fantasy points in a good scenario, and you're just happy with that raw total. So... Adams is a guy that I will likely be over the field on, um, barring any sort of weird news that comes out as the day goes on. Uh, I would rather have Adams to Okafor. Sorry, I would rather have Adams to Randall. I would rather have Okafor to Adams. Uh, for the rest of this team, um, you know, feel free to use someone like Deontay Burton or Ferg or Pat Pat as minimum salary punts on FanDuel. But on DraftKings... Uh, I don't really have much interest in anything outside of the top three. We'll have no Dennis Schroeder. We have no Jeremy Grant, but it's not really opening up anything. This entire team's uh, production runs directly through Russell Westbrook, Paul George, and to a lesser extent, Steven Adams. So, I mean, like Nerlens Noel is the only other guy that I think is like a functional fantasy player, but his minutes are directly tied to the amount of time that Adams is on the court. So it's really difficult to go that way. Ultimately, Russ and PG win the day, and I want to get as much as I possibly can of both of these guys. Um, there's just not enough on the high end. Like if I'm going to spend ten seven ten thousand seven hundred on DraftKings, uh, I would much rather get to Paul George than get to ten K Vooch. Um, I just see a lot more upside for me, especially in a matchup against the Pelicans. So that's my quick walkthrough of the Pelicans and of Oklahoma City. Uh, apologies, apologies again uh, for the technical issues this morning. Not entirely sure what it was, but we just started dropping over and over again. Wanted to make sure we got at least a little bit more video up on the site in our last day before the All-Star break. Uh, we will have the deeper dive and live before lock at, from 5 to 6 and from 6 to 7 respectively. And uh, we will have some... Um, some all-star break content coming up over the next week, but I'm going to use that time to uh, reset the old batteries. So NBA strategy is the promo code. If you want to sign up for us, 50% off your first month, uh, that would start immediately just FYI. So if you are looking to get started with us and you want to use that promo code, um, just know uh, we will have a little bit of content for the all-star break, but it's going to be light on NBA stuff. No games until uh, the following Thursday. So thank you for joining us. Uh, Best of luck tonight. Again, apologies for the technical issues, but we wanted to at least finish off this final game. Um, I will be back on Live Before Lock tonight with Fast City Fear, so come check us out. Thanks, guys.